everyone. We're looking today at Haydn Sonata in E flat major, Hoboken 1652. The first movement, one of the most romantic sonatas that Haydn wrote. Yeah, 1794. We're right in the beginning of the romantic period, end of the classical period, still classical, but one of the latest sonatas that Haydn wrote. So this is... And these are part of the sonatas that he wrote in London. So we're going to have a look at this first movement, and there's so much to talk about. Maybe we'll break this up into a few videos. I'm not sure. Maybe we'll stick it into, uh, keep it to stick to one video only. We're just going to play it by ear and see how that goes. And the phone is ringing. That's okay. Someone's going to pick that up. So here we go. Let's let's have a look at this. That's probably the first challenge in this piece. Is getting here. I'll share with you, you know, a few fingerings here in the Henley edition. Uh, there's also a Universal edition, which is a Wiener Urtex Schott Universal edition, which is my favorite. But I have all these things written in the uh, in the other one. Uh, they're very, very similar anyhow. So uh, for today, we're going to use the Henley. Uh, here we have, they suggest one, two, three. I have written from one of my teachers, one, two, four. And my favorite fingering uh, is a little strange. It's two, three, five. I think, I don't know if that was... Uh, Mark Durand or Anton Querty. I can't remember who gave me that finger. But I just love it. It's it's always worked for me. I've never had problems with it. Almost never. So just, you know, experiment with that. 4, 3, 2, 1, 2, 3, 5 can be a very good finger. And here I like to do 5, 4, 5, 3, 2. You could also do 5, 2, 1. I promise I will not go too much into fingerings. I know it's very boring. Okay, so one thing interesting to consider here, this is from Anton Querty, okay, is these dotted eighth notes and sixteenths, are they exact? One, two, three, four, one, two, Probably, do we do them a little tighter? You know, what if composers at that time liked it to be just a little bit tighter. We I call it tightening the double. We're tightening the 16th note. So instead of going we'd have It sounds more like a quintuplet in a way. And I absolutely love that for this kind of thing. So in a way you would count if we're gonna be a little like specific and count. One, two, three, four, five, one. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one. Sounds something like this. It just has a little more movement to it. Now, in complete contrast, as the classical tradition is all about contrasting, here we have the same thing piano. So maybe you can shape that yum party and come back down. Sorry, and the second one can be less. And then And then shape towards the third beat. And isn't that beautiful? A flat major. Or on the D flat. Major seventh in the left hand.
to look at a little bit of the technical side of this, we have the rotation in the left hand. Again, it's not like this. It's not like this. It's just doing this. Put your arm in extension and open the door knob. These ones here, there's always a combination between playing in the front to walk the fingers on the keyboard, but also having a good grip, right? So you, it feels like you pull the notes towards you and you walk them forward at the same time. Then you get that precise control on the keys. Ta -da -da. From the keys up. You don't have to go so high, you can just go right? Same thing. Another thing we have in classical music, we're not so much connecting things like this is yum, pum, That's a very romantic way of playing. This is slightly romantic, this sonata, but we're deep into the classical tradition. This is not even Beethoven, right? Haydn, the father of the symphony. Yum, yum. That's a more classical way of doing it. It's spontaneous. There's one little thing, and then you take a break, and palm, do the next. So in a way, you're like a conductor. In classical music, you got to be a conductor. It's just like you're conducting. You have these instruments, palm, 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 and you have a pickup to the next thing. You know, palm, or So beautiful, right? An absolutely most beautiful Haydn sonata, along with this C major one, of course. Another one of these London sonatas. Now the rotation is in the right hand. He's inverse to what we have here. Right? Sometimes certain notes can be more expressive yeah like that d flat just like we had here now again the g flat i like to come down here but of course and this is a long note here a very long f dominant now because we've modulated to b flat major the dominant B flat major. We need a little bit of sound here, so something that's going to last those two and a half bars, three bars actually. And now we have so to do it differently, it's an idea. You can go since this line here is going to. Continue in the left hand, and then the second time, bring out the right hand more. That way, bar 14, 15 are not going to be the same. Again, I suppose a more romantic way. You would go right into it in the classical tradition. Cut! Cut after you. When you start this. So you have a clean, fresh start on that B flat major chord. Beautiful. 
Now, let's talk a little bit about the forces of gravity. Yeah, if you haven't seen the other videos I've done on Haydn and the forces of gravity, check that out. I think that will help because we're going to talk about the same thing a little bit in here, right? <laughs> It's a question of how are we shaping the lines. You want to show the curvatures in the lines when the music goes down and goes up. And to do that, you don't shape it to the highest note or the lowest note. You show where the movement is by shaping a little bit after the curve. So ta -da -da. we're going up, now we're going down. This is called centrifugal force. Same thing now. So now you would shape around, I guess, this D here. Or the E flat. Right? What do we have here? So there's a little moment of tension in there. And you want to bring out those dissonance. So that's why we'll probably want to do five, five, four, three. So you can hold the E flat. So this one. Kind of like Bach, yeah? This is, he's writing like Bach right now. And then we come back to yeah. Okay. Now here, yeah. All right, let's do a little practice here on, on connection. Uh, I think it's a really good example for this. Connecting your body to do this centrifugal force. So what is the centrifugal force we want to do? Right, that's the first one. Towards the F. Now this one is a little different. We're going towards the E, the F, the E, between the two notes, it doesn't matter. See how they're a little different, each of those. And then I have an A natural written, is an A flat, is it natural? I don't know. I have a bunch of extra notes written. I'm not sure where they came from, but there's different editions that have extra notes. So, you know, you can look at those like here. An E flat here. And instead of B flat, C, D and F. I'm not sure where those notes came from. I mean, they came, for me, they came from Mark Duran, but you can, if you if anyone knows let me know but it sounds better to me it sounds much better with a D and F I don't know if it's because I'm used to hearing them no, it just sounds better it makes sense I'm not sure where those corrections came from okay so now how to connect ourselves let's let's connect this is gonna be a warm-up for me too because I'm not really warmed up all right so let's take it you know the most basic route that everyone is going to do without having such an understanding of how to connect your body to the instrument. It's gonna come from the fingers. All right, it's a lot of work. It's not a very connected way of playing it. That's why I can lean like this with my arm on the piano and do it. Now, let's connect the arm. We're gonna have, use our wheel, so this is going down and over and around. You 
see how it's naturally doing that shape that we want to do? already getting the shape that we want because of the movement that we're using here. Because when you're coming down here, it's hard for me not to connect the lower body as we've done it so, so many times in this music. So that's what I want to talk a little bit about. I've definitely given examples on this before, but right, do this exercise, put your fists here or here. Somehow this is easier. It works on an upright piano as well and get your feet off the floor so you can pedal your legs, right? It's like pushing in the front with the fists while moving the coccyx and the base of the spine towards the back. That lengthens your spine and establishes the connection that you have putting your weight into the instrument, right? So here the weight is going like this. You can do this like this and you're gonna fall forward when you let go of this. That's, that's exactly the connection that you have fr with, from your lower body, from your sit bones, right? So this is a way of finding it. It's very good. You could look at this as if there's an invisible cord connecting your elbow to your hip bone here. So now this movement you're gonna do, the arm is no longer gonna be independent from this. The arm will actually follow what the lower body movement is doing. It's gonna look like this. Now you don't have to do anything. Your arm is, see naturally as you move the hip bone, you know, let's imagine this is connected here. It's just, you can't play like this. So, you know, maybe there's a block of wood there, whatever. As you go forward, the wrist is going up. And now we're going around, slightly around the right sits bone. It's making a much more lively sound. It's more charismatic. It's more nice to listen to. It's because the body is more connected to the instrument. It's very different from working with the fingers independently. And it's different from the arm being independent from the lower body. Don't let your lower body be dead, like a stump, a tree stump. Nice that we have these movements, but so much more alive if your more of you is engaged in a more connected way. Sorry, was that too many? where you take a little breath, a little breath, all the time between those sections. <laughs> Haven't looked at this in a long time, guys. <laughs> okay. That always makes me think of hot cross buns. You can put a little break after that G between the G and the C. Right? Ah, oh, we're getting more serious. Start a little softer here. So you can do a, a give it a bit, a bit more direction. Here, yeah, we got the right notes. I've seen some wrong notes in some other editions. Okay, 
that's how I always liked playing it. Too. What may be a smarter way of doing that would be to keep the forte. Let's look at the little things we can do here with fingering and arrangement. You could do this, all right? This is how I learned it. Put the thumb here and take the B flat with the left hand. One and two and three and Nice if you have those little uh, 16th rests in between. You and that's very good. One, two, this is one way of doing it. One, two, one. Uh, okay, look at the lower finger. Two, three, four, five. Two, three, four, five. I think you have that in, in the Henley edition. Another way that I have here. This is better. One, three, two, four. It's a little com more comfortable. Oh yeah, these are quarter notes. Two Bs. You only need one. I take that B flat with the right hand. Less on that one. A little bit more on this one. Suspense. All right. So, yes. Even things like that you can connect to your lower body. Not be a tree stump down here. But feel the tension in the legs. And feel this again, right? It helps to sing those lines, especially when you have octaves. And then cut. That sounds a lot better with a little cut. on you. Same thing here. Could be four, three, four, four, two, three. Four, two, three. Four, two, three. Or just three everywhere. Again, rotation. If you mastered this and not this, it's not so hard. Brings us to the development. You one, two, again, lower body really helps. Tension, feel the tension in your legs. Or again, do this exercise. It's almost like doing this. So you feel the pressure. writing a little bit there like baroque again
Silence. That's there. Keep that last note. Dig it on. It's an eighth note, not a quarter note. that theme we had. Uh, why don't you play major? That we had in the beginning. In all kinds of different keys. That's what the development is all about. We're developing the themes, the motifs that we've had in the exposition through all kinds of different keys. We're trying to find our way home. Home is E flat major. That's our home key. We're trying to find our way back there. We've gone to C major. Then we were in F major. We had a modulating circle of fifths is that. I'm sorry, that's not a circle of fifths. So many 
that's that's what happens in the development mm. of the sonata form. Uh, this is nice also here in this section at the end of that part where you have you can just sing the end of that a little bit. I think that's a nice effect. Our other really special moment in this piece is when we get to the B flat seven, right? Notice how the left hand now is the expressive one, just like we had again in the beginning when we had this thing. All right, he's taking that directly from there. So. going to bring us back home, finally, after all of this. Now enter the B flat. just go forward. That walks the fingers. Going up, it's more necessary to give it a little swing. So please, come down there. And when you have these little, again, very Baroque-like uh, poly polyphonic voices imitating each other you show the entry of the voice so and now again the dominant and resolve back to E flat major less Build up here. Sorry, that's an E natural. It's funny because there's an E flat in the left hand. Now we move. Cut between there. Ah, I love this. <laughs> so beautiful. That 
that's the tricky thing in Haydn is we want to express some things. You know, we don't want it to be romantic like Chopin. We don't want to take too much time, but we don't want to be completely mechanical either. There is some expression in it. Plus, you know, as we've established, it's it's a late classical piece, right? So it needs a little bit of expression, but even in earlier Haydn sonatas, I don't think it's a good idea to just stick to metronomical way of playing when you can do something like this. As long as it's, it's done in a subtle way, right? You wouldn't go, let's do it excessively. It's just way too, it's inappropriate for the style, right? So find the, the balance where you can do a slight rubato to just express something. centrifugal force. We go to the B flat. And then the A flat. And again the B flat. So again, that's the sort of stuff. Level one. Level two. Level three. Much much better. Uh, sorry, D natural. So we've stayed in E flat major, our home key, as a sonata form. suspense in between, right? Because ta -da, ta -da. short notes without putting an accent. Kind of a mistake everyone makes, beginners at least, when making this, uh, well, not beginners, but right, <laughs> let's say very advanced <laughs> student still, but e short without an accent. And now, moment of suspense. Freeze. D C. And see, there's a little C, a little pickup into that. D two C. And we have a B double flat. Cut. you have to do this and you won't be able to play it at that speed but uh, yeah, at this speed it can be a challenge to keep the tempo Same 
same length, the last two chords. You know? That's another thing in the classical style, right? When the composers write quarter notes, quarter notes, quarter notes. Not the right notes, but you get the idea. The same length of anything, don't, of everything, don't make the last chord a fermata or a half note or anything like that. But you know, second movement in E major which we'll look at in another video because it's so beautiful the third movement is also really beautiful yes I'm probably playing the first movement too fast thank you for letting me know in advance um, yeah it could be good to you know if you have the habit of playing things a little too fast as many pianists do then a little bit of self-control is good there all right guys that is the first movement of this sonata and this was specifically requested on Patreon by Graham Cameron Wilkinson. So thank you for suggesting that. We're going to look at more of those suggestions on Patreon. If you are interested in supporting us and helping out this channel, then head over to the Patreon page. Take a look at the perks of being a patron. It's really cool. And we're going to have more of these coming up. When you come to my master class, we'll look at it live, in person, on a very nice piano. And that's it. So check out the Patreon page. Check out the website. Uh, and we'll have more coming up soon. If you'd really like us to do the second and third movement of the sonata, well, we can do that. If you haven't seen the playlists on you know, essential piano technique tutorials, I recommend you take a look at that. They're kind, of, they're kind of old and I'm, I'm going through them again, but they're really good. I have get a lot of questions from people about some basic technical things that I think they might be explained in those videos. So have a, have a look at that playlist. And please don't forget to like and subscribe. Yeah, if you like uh, the video, which if you've listened all the way to the end, I'm sure you do, then hit that like button and the subscribe button. If you wanna know when we're live, then click the bell next to the subscribe button to get notifications and that's it here we go guys Haydn E flat major that's it peace over now